Hey everyone, welcome to our second product deep dive for Sounds Profitable. So our goal here is to walk through amazing ad tech products and help explain the best way to use these for everybody that they're applicable for. And today we have our amazing guest, Daryl Battaglia, who is the head of audience measurement at Triton Digital. And the product that we're gonna review today is the Triton Digital Podcast Metrics with a specific focus on their brand new offering, made just for advertisers. So Daryl, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and about Triton Digital? Hi, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so I've been uh, working in the media uh, and advertising industry for over 20 years. I started at Nielsen and spent many years there working across media types. And I've been at uh, Triton Digital for uh, about a year and a half so far and helping with both uh, podcast measurement as well as uh, streaming audio as, uh, in addition to that. That's awesome because there's so much similar, there's so many similarities between the two. And I think what's really exciting to me is that while the similarities are there and allow a lot of interconnectivity that allow other agencies and advertisers to come in, you're also able to help us understand the limitations and the differences between the two that really make podcasting kind of unique. So uh, I'm excited to to dig into this. I think that a lot of people know a little bit about the uh, Triton Digital product. Uh, and they, you know, I personally was calling it the tracker for the longest time because the thing that's the most consumer facing to me is the list of all of the different um, podcasts and the networks and how they rank up by different countries. You guys are pretty well known for that at this point. And so just so I understand, this is uh, an extenuation of that data, right? Like, so if I'm participating in that, this tool is what else I can do as a publisher and what advertisers get access to by also participating in that very visible ranker, correct? That's right. So Podcast Metrics is a comprehensive audience measurement service. So it's it's measurement and it's data, uh, it's a user interface, uh, as well as other uh, capabilities that go along with that. Uh, the public report of the top podcasts and podcast networks is, is an element of that to help with the, the marketing and promotion of the industry as a whole uh, and the networks and podcasts that are participating in that public report each month. Very cool. So yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, I think everybody's really excited to see this. So uh, which side are we going to see first? The, the publisher side, I assume, or? So we're going to start with the publisher side. So uh, we provide IEB uh, V2 certified measurement. Uh, what's kind of unique that helps us measure really anyone in the industry that wants to be measured is that we can collect data uh, directly from whichever uh, hosting platform server uh, or servers or multiple uh, hosting platforms that a publisher is using and integrate that all into this user interface. And we collect the raw data uh, and process it the same way, regardless of which uh, hosting platform a publisher is using. See, I'm uh, really, I'm really a big fan of that, and I want to highlight that for a second because what that means is that we're starting to be able to comfortably separate the technology that people find functionally better for them for their process and workflow, such as hosting a podcast or flighting ads and getting all of that set up from the verification tools like the Triton Digital Podcast Metric platform, and also from uh, ad serving in general, like the abilities with Vast. And so what this really means is that if I'm a publisher and I choose a hosting platform, or I, I even choose to go at it alone and self host, that means that I can work with you guys to provide you my like log level data so that you can process it. And while I'm not interested in getting IAB certified because I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend as an individual, by providing you that data, you're able to process that in a way that now I have IAB certified numbers. And now that means that I can very easily go to the market and I haven't given up any technological control. I just have another great way to get that certified. That's right. And, and it's also the credibility of third party measurements. So Triton is not a publisher, not an ad sales network. We're, we're not in the business of selling advertising directly. Uh, so uh, it's really about providing trust and transparency and credibility with the data that's being used to transact podcast advertising. Yeah, that's really cool to know because there's no Triton podcast, right? There's no, like you guys don't have branded content and you're not selling that advertising. So on your rankers, in your tools, there's no concern related to priority given to your own media. So that's very cool. And that really shows you guys as a third party there. 
uh, to provide that measurement and ranking. So awesome. So, it, so I'm a publisher. I provide my data to you. What we're going through right now is the report and the information that I'm able to see as a publisher uh, once that data has been processed. Is that accurate? That's correct. I'm actually going to start with the dashboard view. So you can quickly kind of see, and you can filter this down from your network as a whole to an individual podcast, whatever you'd like to see, uh, and look at your your statistics, your your downloads and your listeners, uh, as well as downloaded hours. Uh, yesterday, last seven days, uh, trend by day over the last 30 or by week over the last 52. You get a quick snapshot by country if I wanted to drill down into a state level or region level within a country. Uh, I can do that uh, as well as uh, by uh, device type or if I want to drill into that. Uh, you can see like how much uh, within smart speakers, Amazon Echo versus Google Home uh, as an example. That's fantastic. And one thing that you keyed on there is that you can see it by, you said, by, by show or by network, right? And so as a, that, that means that if I am a network or I want to build into a podcast network, I don't have to worry about all the inventory being on the same place. That's something that I think that, that I didn't give enough attention to there uh, that I really like because a, a network is really a representation of all these shows. And a lot of times what we need to ask to build a network is to get everybody on the same hosting provider. Uh, but this means that if everybody provides their data into this tool, that I as a network can represent and associate all of those different shows into one account and be able to, to show it not only by the individual shows, but by my network. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, I mean, we have network clients who uh, maybe they have a legacy hosting platform that they used and, and more recently started with a new platform, or maybe they acquired some shows that are on a different hosting platform. There are a variety of reasons why shows could be on multiple hosting platforms, and we're able to bring it all in and, and measure it in a consistent way. Very cool. And I see the export function on all those different reports. Does that mean that if I hit export after changing what I'm looking at, like I drill down to the device type specifically for Amazon or for smart speaker, that the export will uh, adhere to the different changes or is it just super granular for everything that's available for that option? Whatever report you've created most recently, if you hit export, it will just put that into an Excel. That's awesome. Uh, so if you've up, if I update the report and hit export again, it will change along with it. Okay, yeah, that's great. So what are we looking at now? So this is the uh, sort of deeper dive into creating uh, whichever report you want to create, uh, what we uh, call our Explore module. Uh, you can, uh, if you wanted to switch and pull an individual program, uh, which I'll leave it at the uh, publisher level. Uh, you can pick whichever date range uh, you want. We have these pre-canned date ranges, but you can pick any custom date range you want, and this data is updated uh, daily next day. Uh, and then there's a variety of dimensions, or rather on, on filters right now, to be able to pare back the data to whatever it is that you want to look at. So uh, I might want to look at uh, just a, a certain country or countries. Let's say I'll just pull United States. And if I apply it, it will update it. Uh, but there's a variety of filters to pare back the information uh, by device, by episode, by episode, uh, by a player uh, like you know Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever, uh, by iTunes category. Uh, so there's a variety of different ways that you can create the report, starting by filtering it back to what you want included in the report. And then the dimensions are what you want to broken out by, and you can get really detailed with multiple breakouts or dimensions. Uh, right now I've got it by program, uh, but if I want it, uh, let's say by day and by program, uh, I can do that. If I wanted to add even more breakouts, I, you know, by device within by day and program, I could do that as well. Uh, if I want to look at it by, by player or, or app that, that it's listened on, uh, I can do that. This is at the publisher level. Uh, this is just demo data, but uh, to be able to look at, again, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, Spotify, uh, so on. That's great. And is there a limit to the number of filters and dimensions I can set? Uh, not, there may be. Not that I'm aware of. You can do several. I've never encountered a reason to go any deeper than I've needed to. So I'm not actually sure what the limit uh, is. But Well, the, what I like about this is that um, – 
you know, a lot of the ad tech in podcasting has uh, kind of been from the ground up, right? We're, I think we're building things with people that don't have other media channel experience, but this is a tool that uh, reminds me a lot of the type of reporting and filtering a lot of the digital advertising space has been uh, accustomed to in tools like a double click campaign manager. So you're able to change your filters and dimensions and really grill down to that report that you want. Um, and I noticed that you can save it after you run it, schedule it. How does scheduling it work? So once I've saved my report, I can name it, and then I go into my saved queries. I've got a lot here, but the, uh, the key is uh, to go to add schedule. I can type in whichever email addresses I want to receive this report. So this could be any of my key stakeholders that I might want to receive this report, and they might want to look at it uh, and get, receive it in their inbox uh, in Excel every week, let's say every Monday at 6 a.m., and I hit save new schedule and it is good to go. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's the key kind of publisher functions are to be able to either get the dashboard view or create a report and explore and then to be able to export, save or schedule delivery. And so the, the metrics on the right hand side, the, the, the five um, columns downloads are the IAB certified downloads downloads gross are the the total before filtering with IAB listeners is using the IAB unique listener metric is it over the time period that's run there in the filter it is over the time period that's run and it deduplicates the IAB listener metric so IAB listeners are for a particular episode file it's uh, unique IP address and user agents uh, during a day but if I we're doing it across multiple podcasts or at the publisher level, and the same listener listen to multiple episodes, multiple different programs, whatever it might be, it will deduplicate that number. So it won't double count the same listener uh, based on the IAB metrics. Gotcha, so you, it's truly unique listeners. That's, that's right. very neat. And so downloaded hours and, and data uh, in gigabytes, that's actually pretty cool metrics to know as well, uh, to know what's going out there. Uh, awesome. Right, so the, the next uh, set of functionality is we've recently created the ability to share uh, data with agencies uh, at a more aggregated level and to create something that we're calling lineups, uh, which are groups of podcasts. And a lineup could be a group of con uh, podcasts with a, a common theme, common category, common audience, uh, or it could be a list of podcasts that a particular agency uh, might be interested in or have already bought. Uh, so you can create as many different combinations of lineups or group of podcasts and name them whatever you want on the fly and then uh, pick which agencies you want to share them with. And the agencies can access that as well within this user interface, but uh, it's something where the, the publisher or network is in control of those decisions of what lineups do they want to create and who do they want to share it with or not. How many levels above a, a show is there in a lineup, right? Like, is it just lineup or like show and then right into network or is there, are there, are there different grouping options or is, is a lineup unique and all that's under lineup is just specifically identified shows? Well, you can very easily select, create a lineup that's where you say, I want to include all shows within my network. Or you can pick a, uh, if you've established sub networks within podcast metrics, uh, you can easily pick all shows within that sub -net network and, and uh, name it accordingly. But sometimes you might just want to create some custom grouping, um, you know, based on, it could be uh, true crime podcasts, it could be Here's the podcast that uh, a certain agency uh, just did a buy of. Uh, and so we want to create a lineup for that and share that with them. Uh, it's, it's really whatever you want, but you can create, you can create a lineup with just one podcast. You can create a lineup with all of your podcasts or anywhere in between. Okay, cool. And it's got the same granularity for the reporting to provide as filters and dimensions on this one, or is it a little higher? The level? same concept, uh, but there are certain levels of detail. I'll, I'll walk us through it now. There's certain levels of detail that don't exist, like uh, an agency wouldn't be able to see episode level data. Uh, the minimum reporting period is at least seven days. Uh, so it's not quite the full level of detail that a publisher has access to with their own data. So we're focusing on aggregating it. 
Got it. Okay, that's that's neat. And and with the intention of this being shared, does that mean that when I set it to share, does it give me any ability to limit how long uh, the share is available for? Uh, it's something we're, we're looking to add is uh, if you want to set an expiration date, we've heard that it doesn't exist today uh, where you can set an automatic expiration date, but you can remove sharing of a lineup anytime you want. Yeah, it looked pretty easy on, on the uh, scheduled report to remove it, but the, the problem just becomes with the ad ops person doing too many things at once and forgetting to do that. So very glad to hear that will be a, a feature coming in the future. Yeah, so we're we're continuing to build this out. This is this is new. Uh, we really think it's going to help increase consideration of podcasts amongst agencies. Uh, so if the agencies have access to data, uh, uh, those podcasts that they have access to will be more top of mind, uh, and it provides the the uh, the trust with the data, um, access to data. And it just makes their whole process a lot easier. Right now, they're collecting sort of summary level data directly from networks and publishers, and sort of have to trust that that data is correct and might not know everything that's included in that data. Uh, so having a, a consistent source, easy to access uh, with data that they they know they can trust from from a measurement provider uh, should be a big help to help agencies buy more podcast advertising. That's fantastic. And so agencies that want to get access to this data or participating with publishers that are already working with you, are they able to easily provide feedback? So agencies, uh, we've, we've gone out and met with many, many agency teams already. They're, they're eager to uh, get access to data. Uh, they, uh, it's no charge to the agency. Uh, and we've sort of built this with their needs in mind, with the concept that if we make it easier for them to, to evaluate and buy podcast advertising, it will help the networks and publishers as well. So we've taken a lot of feedback into their account. It'll, it'll continue to improve and evolve. Um, and so uh, it's pretty simple for them to get on board. Uh, the, the UI is very intuitive. Very cool. Uh, so we don't, don't anticipate any, any issues with that. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and create a lineup. So uh, I'm going to, create a news lineup. I'll just call it Triton Demo uh, News Lineup. Uh, I'm going to uh, pick the programs that I want to include. I'll pick these two. Uh, I will add my shares. So there will be, this is just a demo account, but there will be a list of agencies here. So I'll pick an agency that I want to share it with. Uh, you can restrict the data that is shared. It could be global or it could be a list of countries. Uh, again, I'll, I'll stick to United States if I wanted to add Canada as well or anything else, I could do that and hit save. And uh, sharing has begun. This gives you a preview of the downloads and listeners for the last four weeks for whichever lineup uh, you created. And then uh, the publisher network will have the same access uh, to be able to see it in the same way that the agencies do, which is through our lineup explorers tab. Uh, and if I go in here, um, I will, which was the one I just created right here. Uh, I will find the new lineup. I can select multiple lineups that I want to look at if I choose. Um, I can pick whichever time period I want to look at. I'll look at, uh, let's just go with this week here. And I can see details on this. Uh, what I can filter back to or report on, uh, like I said earlier, is a little bit more limited. Uh, if it included multiple countries, we can see the country detail. We can see device family or device type, like smart speaker versus mobile. Uh, the uh, region within the country, the iTunes category and subcategory, uh, as well as uh, you can also see individual program detail. Gotcha. So as a publisher, what I'm saying is here is the specific grouping of shows that I'm making available. Here is the country limitation and here's who can see it. And then as an agency, I'm able to go in there and all these things that are shared to me, I'm able to look and have slightly less of a filter than the standard publisher side, but, but it seems rightfully so, um, to be able to drill down to more information. So this means if I want to provide a, a grouping of shows that I'm making available to an agency and they want to know 
how many people are using smart speaker then in, in that grouping then i'm going to be able to just open that up for them to explore it instead of having a conversation with me filling out a google sheet trusting the numbers this is all live and accessible considering you just built this we were able to see it pretty much instantly as the uh, agency view, which is what we're in right now, correct? That's right. So it really, we view this as helping to connect uh, buyers and sellers of advertising uh, to be able to use a common data set with common access uh, for the agencies and the brands to be able to drill down a little bit to understand the audience that they're, they either are considering buying or have bought, um, but not like overloading with like every available detail uh, on that program, just kind of the key stuff yeah. they need in order to evaluate uh, purchasing advertising. As a publisher, do I have the ability to restrict that uh, they can see the individual programs and focus it just on being able to show just the lineup in aggregate? Uh, not currently. So this is sort of uh, standard. Uh, we've heard uh, that this is really a requirement on the agency side for it to be useful. To see uh, drilled down to the individual show? Yeah, they want to be able to know, like, okay, which shows in that lineup are active, things like that. Um, they want to understand the makeup of the lineup. I think the lineups are great to be able to sell at a greater scale, uh, to be able to sell groups of shows rather than just an individual show. Uh, but if you don't provide any detail about what's in that group, uh, you know, then that sort of doesn't provide the information needed to make a decision. Gotcha. Very interesting. I can see both sides to that. I definitely see the agency side want to see all the, all the details, but I can see the publisher side wanting to make sure some of their smaller and growing shows are getting the attention by being grouped in a lineup. But it sounds like you guys are very open to feedback, and I'm sure if publishers are looking for those features, uh, there'll be options for that in the future. Absolutely. Excellent. So what are we looking at next? Uh, so that really is, is it. I mean, you can run this report... Um, uh, with whichever dimensions that are available that you choose. So if I want to look at it again, it doesn't include daily data. It's a minimum seven day reporting period. But if I wanted to run it by week, uh, I could do that. If I wanted to look at uh, as an agency at multiple lineups that are available to me across multiple networks, uh, I could do that. Uh, so really, this is just a, a way to um, get easy access to data uh, across uh, multiple networks and publishers uh, in a consistent way uh, with uh, measurement that is consistent and reliable as well. Uh, I think so that's, that's really cool because the filter there, like what, what you built allows these agencies to uh, use this as a primary tool. So obviously it's beneficial for the agency to have more publishers use this. And I, there's a lot of benefit for publishers to use this as well. It's one centralized source. We're not dealing with, you know, the Brian Barletta show showing uh, two weeks of data that's worldwide to show my best download numbers where uh, the Daryl Battaglia show is showing um, a whole month uh, in just the US to highlight it differently and someone with an Excel spreadsheet putting it together. So for, you know, this is definitely really beneficial for the agency, this new additional part you have on here, especially the ability to, to not only like look at just what's provided to them by one partner, but pull it all together. They can start to see similarities between the shows that they're looking for so they can mix and match. They can trust the data because it's accurately uploaded for them. Uh, I do like the seven day period. I think that, you know, podcasting has a very interesting cycle and some shows, you know, are daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, even different than that, right? Some are dropped as seasons. So I think you guys are providing the tools for people to look through all this, to schedule it and, and kind of build this as part of their process, which uh, I think is, is a definite big part of growing the ad tech space for podcasting. Now, the this is really great from a reporting tool are there any future plans to take this and and say i want to action on this so uh we've um been working with uh strata freewheel on integration into their buying platform uh that's been in the works uh so we're not a buying platform it's, it, the purchase of the advertising doesn't occur directly through this platform it's more to uh either evaluate and make decisions on buying or to track that buy uh, after it's occurred. Uh, you know, so buying platform, you'll typically see uh, insertion orders or invoicing occur through those platforms. That, that's not what this is intended to be. 
Uh, however, we are continuing to look into what other information can we put in here. Uh, we're really trying to replicate uh, an offline sales process that occurs today. Uh, so right now, through PDFs, through PowerPoints, through Excel files, networks and publishers are sharing not only uh, the download information for their program, and, and like you said, that could be different time periods, different geographies, um, might not be clear on exactly what makes up that number. But they're also providing things like uh, show description and episode release frequency and a variety of other information. So you know, our goal is to uh, incorporate as much of that current process, which is kind of clunky, uh, although it does work for them, and try and make it easier and incorporate it in, into this as much as possible. So there will be things that we continue to add, and it will be based on the feedback we get of uh, finding the common needs between uh, what uh, publishers and networks need to sell advertising and what agencies and brands need in order to more easily buy advertising and helping connect the two together. I like that a lot. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for joining me here. This is a really great tool. I think that uh, we really do need to centralize some of these thoughts and, and how we share and store data. Um, Triton has been really great at exposing a lot of your methodology. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Your methodology for how you handle the podcast metrics tool, as I should be calling it correctly, how you receive that data, how do you properly use that data, all of that methodology is available on your website, um, along with how you process things through IAB and your methodology and decisions there. And I think that should give people a lot of confidence on giving this a shot, reaching out to you and seeing if it's a good fit. And especially if you're an agency, I really think that there is no reason why you shouldn't look at this, especially considering that Daryl says it's free for you to sign up, uh, dig into it, and give feedback. So I am excited to see the adoption of this and, uh, and looking forward to seeing more reports on a monthly basis from Triton with a growing number of publishers on it. Yeah, thanks, Brian, for, for giving us the opportunity to share this. And, and for any uh, publisher or network that's interested in giving it a try, we can onboard data for you and provide access to a month of data at no charge before getting started. So we're happy to help help you get a look at the data within the, the user interface. That's a great deal. Great way to look at it before you buy in fully. So very cool. And thank you very much. And we're excited to have Triton back later this year for another deep dive. Thank you.